We are halfway through 2024, so it's time to talk about the worst film so far for this year that I feel like I wasted my time with, but I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section and let you guys also know that while I'm being negative in today's video, I definitely was positive in yesterday's video where I talked about the best film so far for 2024. Go check that out after this video if you're clicking on this one first. If you're from that video, thanks so much for watching. Let's dive into this. Out of my number 10 is Spaceman. I think this is the only film on this list where I won't say it's like a terribly made movie, but it is a movie that I was sorefully disappointed in. And when it comes down to my entire ranking of all the films so far for this year, it is at my number 10 for the worst spot. And it sucks to say because Adam Sandler teaming up with someone who helped create Chernobyl, that is like a dynamic mix that I'm already in for. And when I saw the trailer and noticed that Paul Dano is going to be playing a talking spider, well, I was all on board for this weird spiritual adventure and I watched it and it was boring. It was a film that I felt was more style over substance than anything else. And I think a lot of what fails this movie is sadly the script. Adam Sandler's great. Paul Dano's voice performance is really good. The, the, the CGI on the spider, awesome. The rest of the film, not so much. Brings me down into my number nine, and that is Garfield. I think the second most memeable movie of 2024. And a film that I was really hoping to like in this, but I walked away going, no, not for me. And I don't even know if it's really much for Garfield fans, because I grew up reading the Garfield comic strips in newspapers. Yes, I, I used to do that. But when I watch this, it has its Garfield antiques to it. But in the end of the day, it's more of like a, a Mission Impossible heist film telling a story about why Garfield has daddy issues. And I think that's actually really boring. It's pop culture references. Sure, get a chuckle here and there. But the entire film is an absolute blink and you miss it. A movie that you kind of make fun of. And the best part about the film is when I came home and read the letterbox reviews for it. That's not a pro. We get into my number eight, and that is Madam Web. Madam Web, I did not see in theaters. I got married the week before it came out, and then I went on my honeymoon, and I was like, okay, not checking this out. These reviews are not good. I don't care to watch it. And I walked away from Madam Web feeling utterly that. It was trash. It was trash, and as I said, Garfield is the second most memeable movie of the year. This is the first. And it sucks because I think while I wasn't fascinated by the entire idea of it, <laughs> the film in a sense is like Final Destination in the Spider-Man universe. And that is a cool idea. The suits for the characters look cool in marketing. Wasted. <laughs> Barely in here. I mean, everything you've heard about this movie is true. Um, I don't know if it's worse than Morbius, personally. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But... It's definitely two films I will never rewatch when having to rank all the Spider-Man movies. And uh, I say that with confidence. I think the best part about the movie is probably the cinematography, but the rest is just product placement, mishandling, and it doesn't even feel like it's trying to connect to anything anymore. Like, they don't even say Peter Parker when they clearly should. We know Ben Parker's in the movie, but I, I have no idea what they were even trying to attempt with this film. I'm just happy I never have to see it again. Brings us up to the next worst film of this year so far, and that is Despicable Me 4. Now, count this as the worst, count this as the most disappointing possibly on this list, but either way, I didn't really care for this one. And I say that as someone who loves the first Despicable Me so much, who loves the second one, and specifically had a lot of fun with Minions Rise of Gru. But I thought the third one was kind of just boring and I don't really remember it all too much. And Minions, I thought, was the worst film in this franchise. But after really thinking on it, Despicable Me 4 might be the worst Illumination film yet. And just in general of this franchise. And I think a lot of that comes down to this movie feels like it should have been a television show. It feels direct to video, the story, the subplots, everything doesn't feel like it's mixing or cohering together. And it feels like they had a short film idea to make minion superheroes, but let's put the plot in here. Oh, maybe Gru needs to be a villain again and help this person who's trying to blackmail him. So let's do that here. Oh, he pissed off this cockroach looking dude. So he's going to be a villain for this too. And then, of course, all the other characters are going to have little stupid subplots in here specifically. And the three little main girls, yeah, we're not going to really remember them. Oh, but he also has a baby now. How does that interact with the world? Oh, it's just more comedic relief like the minions. Did that sound disjointed to you? Did that sound like a fucking rambled mess to you? That's the big one me for. I understand this movie is probably made for kids. Kids will laugh. They laughed at my screening. I look at this movie and I just get utterly frustrated because animation is a medium that should be for kids and families. 
and just in general, even adults. And if I like the first two films and specifically even the last one, there is no excuse for why this film felt like disjointed. And now going forward, I don't think I even care for this franchise anymore. Now brings me up to the next one. And this is one that I was not planning to watch because I heard the first one was awful. And I still gave it a chance, and it is definitely better than the first one, but that is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. And my problem with this one is it has one of the major issues of the first one, and that's still that they're trying to go too overly serious with this franchise, where in the end of the day, I don't care for those dramatic moments. Like, you can get serious and overly, like, kooky with the lore and the mythology, which I was totally a fan of. I thought that was actually one of the biggest pros of this, and some of the kills were awesome in here. But overall, it's a very forgettable movie that has overly hammed up dramatic moments that do not need to be there, when in the same fact and vein, the film should just be badass. It should just be a schlocky kill fest. And even then, sometimes the kills are a little bit too dark to notice what's going on. And I know this is a very lower budgeted movie, but it has those issues. And then even on top of that more, where the hell was Tigger? He's barely in the movie. Same with Owl. It's just very much a mess. And I try to get excited for these parody off IP that goes into the public domain, but I don't know if I can. Which brings me up to my next film, and that is The Scar Giver Rebel Moon Part 2. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I like the first, but this made me like the first one less now. And I think a lot of that reason is this one had a writing on it. If the first one was kind of like the build up to everything, I needed the second one to execute more character development, even more action, and this war that they were building up to. And it certainly delivered on, like, the war, I guess, but the rest, not so much. The action is very forgettable. It's honestly just visual noise. It looks good, but I can't really remember a single thing that happened. Same thing with the characters. Couldn't tell you who any of their names were. And overall, characters that I wanted to know more about, I didn't learn anything for me to give more of a shit about. And maybe Zack Snyder's director cuts will fix all of this, but I'm so exhausted. Why weren't those the first things <laughs> that came out? It's dumb. I, I just, I can't recommend this. I think it is one of the worst blockbusters I've ever seen. Like Sucker Punch more than Rebel Moon. That's saying a lot. And now coming down to my number four is Damsel. Now, I think this movie, what I can say, like I said for Spaceman, maybe not a movie that's bad per se, but a movie that's just not my cup of tea and not one that I didn't think the film was about. Now, Damsel, I was a little bit excited for Millie Bobby Brown fighting a dragon. That's awesome. I'm looking for something badass here. She gets fucked over by these new kings that she got married to, and it's basically her trying to survive against a dragon in a cavern. I'm not a fan of one-type situations where they're trying to survive. 127 Hours is maybe like the best vein of those movies, but didn't really care for Buried, didn't really care for that Alaska one with Mads Mikkelsen, and the list can go on and on because I didn't really care for Damsel either. I think the ending's cool. I think Millie Bobby Brown's cool. I think the dragon looks good. This is one of those films that's just not my cup of tea once again. Speaking of films that are not my cup of tea, at my number three, that is The Mean Girls the Musical, which if you remember, I gave a positive review for earlier this year. But it's one of those few films, it's one of the rare films that over the months, I've seen it three times. And every time I've rewatched it, I've liked the film less. Then I think about the film more, and I like it even more less. A film that is definitely not my cup of tea. I even said it in my review. I was borderline, didn't know if I loved it, liked it, didn't feel for it. But it feels like it's for generations younger than me. And this is going to be their Mean Girls growing up. And that's cool. I'm so happy for you guys if you like the movie, but for me, I didn't care for it. I think it doesn't execute on what the Broadway Mean Girls play tried to do, which I don't know a lot about, but my sister, who's a massive fan of, told me every single thing about it. I think Renee Rapp is great in here, though. I think the girl who plays Moana, also great. The rest of the film, not so much, and again, just very forgettable. We get into my number two worst film so far of the year, and that is Miller's Girl. Uh, Martin Freeman, Jenna Ortega... He plays a teacher. She plays a young high school student that wants to sleep with our teacher. I don't know what happened in this. It took me like four, three days to finish it with my wife. And I still couldn't tell you what happened in this. But what I can tell you, I don't remember a fucking single thing about it. I genuinely think it's boring. It's a drag. And it's one of those films that I can't recommend to anyone. 
Um, I even almost thought about going to see this in theaters like before I had seen any of the reviews and I'm really happy I didn't. I'm happy I just wasted time in between like my lunches for work watching this movie to try and get through it. And once I finally finished it, I was like, yes, yeah, st still didn't feel that one. So maybe you haven't heard about this movie. Two great actors who just deserved a better film. Now we get into my one number one worst film of 2024 so far and that is Unfrosted. Ah, yeah. Now, I know some of you guys might, because some of you guys came at me in my comment section on Letterboxd and said, Zach, you can't review a movie you didn't finish, because my original comment was, got 30 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes in, terrible, one out of five stars. So I went and finished the movie, God forbid, I don't remember if I updated on Letterboxd, because I think that's how mad it was. And I watched it, it's awful. It is awful. It is awful beyond means, and it sucks to say that, because I really like Jerry Seinfeld. I like the Seinfeld show. I like a lot of his comedic sketches and I like his comedic personality. And I was really excited to see what he can do with the unfrosted film. And then I watched it and I was like, Oh God, this is not, this is not it. And I think a lot of it just kind of comes down to certain choices that they try to make with the movie. And it comes in a climate where it's a parody movie, like walk the line, the Dewey Cox story, the walk hard or whatever the hell it was called. And parody movies like that just don't really work anymore in this world. And I think Unfrosted may have worked five, eight, nine years ago. But now, no. It's just boring. It, it, there's so many better comedies out there to waste your time with. And Unfrosted is definitely not one of those. But that is my worst films of 2024 so far. Make sure to go check out my best so far. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.